Hello and welcome back. I hope you're doing well and enjoying the videos. Today's bonus video was inspired by your questions and um, I can just go on and on with this conversation about essential oil profiles. And uh, we started a conversation about Immortel Helichrysum Metallicum. And as this oil is quite close to me, it's a uh, I have this personal connection to it and have a, quite some experience with it and also know many distillers who are distilling it. I want to share some story with you that might impact on how you're viewing essential oils. And Immortel is one of those essential oils. As you see, we have quite some examples in Dropsmith uh, that they have very different chemistry. And if you study from books, usually you have two essential oils from Helichrys Metallicum that are mentioned. So you have one from France and one from Croatia. And uh, taking a quick look at it, uh, you see the difference right away if you're looking from the chemistry point of view. If you're smelling it, you will see that usually the ones that come from uh, France have a more flowery sweet smell although still a uh, um, middle to heavy note whereas where you smell the uh, the immortal from Croatia it will have um, maybe a, a heavier feel to it because it's more the sesquiterpenes that you're smelling it's it's a different dynamic so the ones with purple <laughs> are usually from France so see this one here is definitely from France, this one. And here is the same brand, for example, and I know this one is from France and this one is from Croatia. And so this is what I'm talking about. They both have quite uh, an opus of sesquiterpene molecules, but they dominate in sesquiterpenes in Croatia and sesquiterpene um, esters here. And ketones, actually, um, in some books, they talk about these uh, unique ketones that we have in Immortel. However, this is not; these are not the only countries where you distill Immortel, so it becomes complicated. Like this one is from Italy, and then sometimes you have from Morocco, and so you have, um, and then we have one from Slovenia right there, which is relative, very close to Croatia, right next to it actually. But because the climate is different or perhaps the land is different um, the the region is very different from Dalmatia of course you have a different product so a lot of times when we talk about immortal essential oils they uh, it's mentioned that the chemistry is connected to the region to the place or country but I would just like to point out that all of these countries has, have many regions, so I don't think that's the way to go. Mm, because Immortel, um, you can find it now, it's also being cultivated uh, 10 years ago or more when it wasn't so popular. Usually it was wild uh, picked and it loves to grow right on the coast, at least in Croatia where I pick it. Uh, right on the coast on rocks literally growing out of rocks so it has a very specific terrain it enjoys and now it's being cultivated so of course uh, the chemistry is very different this is also a great example of an oil that I personally feel should be chemotype look how different it is however as I said um, you will find similarities in any immortal you come across or I came across <clears throat> because it has this heavier note it has this soothing effect and it might be because of these ketones no matter how small the percentage it is quite effective on what it does for the body so this is what I wanted to point out for you it's not just the country it's on it's on the it's also the region and on the terrain on the ground itself might it's very different if it's been growing right next to the sea where it has the heavy breeze you know and uh, and the salt and it's literally growing out of a rock 
or you're having a whole field of nicely cultivated immortal where it has the ground in completely different weather and no salt coming at it. Um, and here comes the story. So as I know pretty much all of these founders or people who actually distill the oils, I have a lot of stories. And um, the one I would like to tell you is from uh, my friend right here. He's from Croatia and he has a very specific distillery and he loves to distill Immortel. So he was explaining to me how he distilled it. And distilling is really an art and I talk more about this in my, um, what they call it, uh, ABCs of aromatherapy. So if you're curious about distilling, you might find some information there. It's a very short class. But uh, what he said is, and what people don't think about is how long you distill. So he experimented with this. He's a man who is distilling for over 30 years, all sorts of um, plants, and um, he's very interesting and uh, loves what he does. So he says, well, Melanie, you know, my oil is different. Why? Because people usually cut it off short, and I wait for 20 more minutes. So I know when these two big balls fall down my still, that's when I stop. So I'm guessing that these two balls, what he's talking about, is the sesquiterpene content because they're very heavy and he has to distill for 20 minutes more than the colleagues on his island, actually, to get the quality he's looking for. So even if they're distilling the exact same um, product, exact same plant, he will get a completely different product because he's waiting for those 20 minutes for those balls, whatever that is. I haven't seen them. I want to go and take a look. Uh, because then that is what he's waiting for. That is what gives it the smell, the effect, the, um, you know, whatever it is that he finds those uh, sesquiterpenes bring to his oil. So it's one little point that made a complete aha moment in me and that is how important it is. It can be a minute of difference and uh, when we talk about quality of essential oils, how many things to take into account. So I wanted to share this with you as you're my aroma empresses and as you are sharing knowledge with your students and clients, I think you should take these things into, into consideration, into pondering, into understanding it from all sorts of perspectives. Yes, we are having um, an accent on the chemistry, but that chemistry can help you raise more questions as you've been having on the comments and inspiring me, because now you're looking at broad, more broad and broad and broad, and you know, as your viewpoint and your understanding is growing, so is your appreciation for these oils. So, um, and your understanding of quality. So depending, when we talk about distilling, depending on what you want as an outcome, you're going to set up distill, and that includes how long you will distill. So that's why I really think distilling is an art. I will not compare this, I'll leave that to you to you know, explore it and, for example, look at these two. They have sesquiterpene alcohols that you don't really find in, in the other ones or you find it in a very little um, percentage. Look how the, uh, you know, ratio of monoterpenes is being so different and esters and which ones are those? What are the ketones that are in Immortal that makes it so special? Or do they really? Um, I found that we have quite some interesting chemical components in Immortelles, all of these, that we didn't find a lot of research from. So it is quite a mystical and beautiful essential oil. Uh, it's also very safe and very, very powerful. So I will give you this one last tip because I can talk about Immortel for the entire day and I will not. I'll try to keep it short. So my, one last tip with Immortel is it's so powerful you really don't want to use it for more than 1%, even less. 
it is such a powerful anti-inflammatory that it can literally stop the inflammatory process if you use it neat. So if you use Immortel directly on your skin, in my experience, you will not do damage on the skin, but you you might really be too powerful in some of its effect, and that includes anti-inflammatory. So this is something, another thing that people don't think about. They think more is more, but I find that diluting Immortel actually brings more effect than using it neat. Okay, let me know what you think about this lesson. Thank you so much for inspiring me to share this with you. And uh, have a beautiful day ahead. I hope you're having fun with this. Bye.